a bump coming up. Hi, my name's Wyatt Knox. Wyatt Knox is an American rally champion. And today, I'm breaking down more clips from movies and TV about driving. All-wheel drive car control, baby driver. So an all-wheel drive turbocharged car is gonna have a distinct advantage over a two-wheel drive car. Uh, whether you have a front-wheel drive car or a rear-wheel drive car, you need to put all of your power through those wheels in order to get traction and go. Where an all-wheel drive car, with all wheels driven, you can have more power, a turbocharged engine like this, and put a lot of power down and get actual acceleration instead of just wheel spin. <laughs> It's also really nice to see that they've got a lot of the kind of clips to foot and hands and things inside the car pretty spot on in this. I mean, the driving is highly exaggerated. If you were, you know, running away from a bank robbery, you're not just going to be chucking it this sideways. Um, but for the sake of what it is, it's on point. Corkscrew jump, the man with the golden gun. You're not thinking that. I sure am, boy. Never heard of Evil Knievel. So this jump, believe it or not, is completely legit. So it looks here like the driver kind of takes off and goes right off this jump. I'm sure there was a longer run up and the driver had a little bit of time to get up to speed, find a steady speed, and then really just accelerate smoothly off of it. It was really well planned out as far as the curvature of things and the distance and the calculated speed. They actually slow the clip down a little bit for the movie just because it happens so fast in real time. Add a little slide whistle over it, and it's good to go. I've never done that before. Neither have I, actually. Car chase through San Francisco. Bullet. So the thing about San Francisco is as a driver, you've got these steep uphills, steep downhills, big off cambered corners, and obviously the jumps that make this car chase so famous. So this scene's legendary, and I don't have too much bad to say about it. The one thing you will notice is the little green Volkswagen. I need some information. They go by that Beetle uh, at least four times in this car chase. Other than that, fantastic driving, really good stuff. There's the green Volkswagen. There's the green Volkswagen. There's the green Volkswagen. There's the green Volkswagen. Right? It's the only thing I've had to say about the whole chase. Pit maneuver, fast and furious. Any sort of normal form of motorsport, this would be taking your license away and you'd be black flagged forever. You can't be good for business. Yeah, well, that depends on how you look at things. Essentially, a pit maneuver is when you hit the rear quarter panel of another car with the intention of spinning them out and around and crashing them so you can keep going. No! It's definitely something to be avoided. It's not that big a danger of crashing and going off the road, but what you'll see is especially your front fenders bend in and get bound up on those tires real easily, and then you're just giving yourself a flat tire uh, and giving yourself a lot of problems down the road. You're a lucky man. How's that? You're still breathing. You're a lot better off just driving faster, uh, but you know, illegal street racing is what it is. Slingshot, Talladega night. Come on, man, slingshot it. Shake and bake, buddy. Slingshot engaged. Help a rival driver pass a teammate. In order to understand drafting, it's easy to think about one car traveling through the air, the resistance of pushing through all that air at the front of the car, but then also at the back. If you have two or three cars on the same team out there, you can do a lot to help each other out using that drafting phenomenon. 
It's just okay. exciting that we're trying things like that. Yeah. So the slingshot move, there's two ways to do it. The way that they do it here, the two cars line up. Both of those cars are now gaining a bit of an advantage on that lead car. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. As the two cars approach the lead car, the rear car comes out and has a bit of a burst of speed for a moment to try and overtake that lead car. Well, we're real happy with, um, with what was going on. What's also very common in NASCAR is when you get three cars close together, that lead car has a lot of drag on the front and the rear car has a lot of drag on the back, but that middle car is sort of just in a slipstream for a second. That's gonna give him a really good potential acceleration for a moment. Uh, and if they capitalize on that, you can get that pass where you might not be able otherwise to have the horsepower to do so. Shake it before you bike it. Handbrake turn, die hard with a vengeance. Hang the f on, all right? I mean, it's pretty good. It's conceivable that with enough speed, if you did a handbrake turn on a wet paved road like that, um, you could get the car to do a 360. You became. I'm no expert on, you know, shooting out the window left-handed while you were trying to pull it off, but you would definitely want to get rid of any ABS, stability control, traction control, and that kind of stuff. If you try that in a modern car with the ABS still active and that kind of thing, it's just not going to work. What the f happened? You got a triple A card? Handbrake turn, vacation. Hang on! All right, so this is computer generated, but it does depict a pretty real scenario. So this is the Fast and Furious syndrome. If Vin Diesel can do it, so can I. Why are you as good as Vin Diesel? Things that are exaggerated through movies give people a little bit of the wrong idea on what works and what doesn't. So in a sports car or a rally car or something kind of low, slung, and wide, you get away with sliding around and chucking it sideways and doing handbrake turns and things like that. In anything that's a little bit narrower and a little bit taller, you've got a much higher center of gravity. Your risk of rollover is much, much higher. That's not what I was trying to do. Off-road driving, the Duke's a hazard. High speed driving on some of these rougher surfaces like they're doing here with the old Charger. The main risk is gonna be flat tires, broken suspension parts, and definitely damaging kind of the soft underbelly of your car and your tires. Well, I guess we only got one choice. There are definitely measures that you can take to protect, you know, skid plates underneath the car, heavy duty suspension, heavy duty tires, maybe a little extra air pressure. It's all real driving back then, and honestly, it's really pretty good. Car chase, Ronin. <laughs> high speed pursuits in narrow city streets like this chase through Paris. There's a lot of curbs, there's a lot of obstacles, vegetable carts as they love in the movie chase scenes and everything else. Nice, like that, my kind of job. The biggest key is really just always looking for your opening and your window and your gap and your spot where you can fit the car. Why? It's your human instinct a lot of times to be looking at the pedestrian and the vegetable car. Go to what you know. Just like skiing or mountain biking or anything else, you know, if you look at the bad things, you hit the bad things, you look in the good places, you go in the good places. Car chase through a mall, the Blues Brothers. You got us into this parking lot, pal. Now you get us out. <laughs> Pants and burgers, yeah. Lots of space in this mall. So there's not a lot not to love about the Blues Brothers chase through the mall. Uh, there's nothing in there that your normal car couldn't really do. They drove through a lot of glass, so you might get a flat tire, but you know, there wasn't really, you know, computer stuff back then to really fake anything with. Looks like a lot of fun. Why don't you offer some constructive criticism? They should have put their seat belts on. That's all I'm gonna say about that one. Burnout, the transporter. So the foot camera of doing that burnout isn't exactly right. I'm listening. 
in order to do that burnout, you'd either need to rev the engine, dump the clutch, and quickly left foot brake. Specific. Dumping the clutch is when you rev the engine and quickly release the clutch in order to shock load those rear tires and give them a lot of quick acceleration to get them to brake traction and start spinning. No long speeches, just keep it simple. Or manage both those tasks with just your right foot and heel and toe it to stay still doing a burnout. But also, you know, obviously once he tries to jump the bridge, it all just goes into computer generated land and he lands on a trailer and magically drives away. You're very good. Spikes on the hubcaps, grease. The idea of putting spikes on your hubcaps to try and get into someone else's bodywork and their wheels and tires and disable their vehicle, uh, well, it's sort of bad sportsmanship, I suppose. Yeah, so? What you find, though, is that he only mounted them kind of to his hubcaps, and so when they really needed them, they kind of fell off, and you probably wouldn't want to make it out of aluminum. Like you see, this one is, is going to crack and break apart pretty easily. You probably want to use some high-strength steel, bolt it through your lug nuts you'd have some useful wheel spikes. Horsepower, the fate of the furious. You gotta have about 2,000 horsepower in that thing. Try 3,000. Uh, two things on that. One, as long as both rear tires are spinning, it doesn't matter if you have 2,000 horsepower, 20,000 horsepower, he's not getting any traction on the road, he's not getting any grip, he's not pulling anyone anywhere at that point. Something about this whole thing that just doesn't add up to me. He might have 500 horsepower, uh, he could have closer to 1,000 perhaps. And in this situation where you're trying to pull something, it's the difference between horsepower and torque is where you really might want to spend a little bit of time doing some homework. I'm going to keep it about the cars. Acceleration at higher speeds, you're worried about horsepower, but really pulling and moving and getting things going, you need a huge amount of torque. Jumping a car, the Dukes of Hazard. One of the mainstays of the old Dukes of Hazard were these massive car jumps, 30, 40 feet in the air, and everybody lands and drives away like they're fine. Helicopters. I need helicopters. Jumping a car is just like jumping anything else. What you need is a pretty smooth takeoff and then a nice smooth downhill landing. Right before they go off the jump, the driver takes his hands off the wheel and puts one sort of like in the middle of the wheel like this. Something you never really want to do. Good hand position always, especially in that situation. Sure gonna be a pleasure to work with a real professional man. Yeah. But you definitely want to be uh, at the right angle on the takeoff, on the throttle, with a nice smooth landing on the way out in order to uh, accomplish that successfully with a car. Crashing a car, Spectre. Ah. So he drives off a little jump in an Aston Martin and rips the entire top off another car without doing any damage to his completely fake. So in almost every vehicle in the world, you've got A, B, and C pillars. Your A pillars are the pillars on either side of your windshield, those strong metal bars that go up and support the roof. Um, by your doors, you've got the B pillars, kind of on your shoulder length. Those are the B pillars. And the C pillars, if you have them, if you've got, you know, not a really small car, would be in the back. Uh, again, those rearmost pillars that support the roof structure. Those A, B, and C pillars are some of the strongest points of your car, so that if your car's gonna roll over, it doesn't just crumple. The idea of an Aston Martin cruising through there with his bumper cover still intact is not realistic. Driving down the stairs, the born identity. So this is a great car chase. It's all real driving. There's no kind of CG stuff going on. I'm just trying to do the right thing. As far as the Mini, it's cool to see in a movie like this because in a real situation, you're not gonna be driving you know, the Astons and the Jaguars and the real, you know, Bugattis or whatever it is. You want to drive what everybody else is driving. I got to figure this out. Whether or not a vehicle will be able to drive up or down stairs, really, you're looking at the approach angle, which is the angle you'll be able to drive up something between the bumper and the tire. 
the breakover angle, which is in the middle, and then your departure angle, which is the same thing, aligned between your rear bumper and the bottom of your rear tire. That roughly tells you how much of an incline you could drive up or down or over. You wouldn't obviously want to take off the top quite as quickly as they did. You know, go a little easier and roll over and same thing at the bottom. For driving down staircases and over things like that, a little mini is actually a really good way to go. Conclusion. As much fun as it is to kind of poke around and see what could be more realistic, if you adhered by all of the actual laws of physics in the world, a lot of these car chases would be really boring. If one car spins out and the other one's just gone and that's the end of the scene, nobody wants to watch that. The way that they're filming some of these action chase scenes today is pretty spectacular to watch and really enjoy a lot of it just as a viewer. Hey!